you staying in this country long, Mr. Everly? No, just an overnight business trip. I see. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to see you again. But I'm afraid it's rather a case of hail and farewell. Oh? I'm attending a banquet in just over an hour. Perhaps we can meet again later. Well, I guess it's not just going to work out that way. You see, I've got a reservation on the midnight plane back to New York. Really? That's fast even for you. <laughs> Perhaps you'll tell me all about it on the way back to town. Sure, let's go. Pity you stay so short, J.D. It's a long way to come for just a few hours in London. I've been chasing this item too long to let such a golden opportunity slip by. That is, if you okayed for me. It's a pleasure. I'm always willing to be of help. Certainly makes me feel good to know that. Wasn't it you that always said you can't be too careful about these things? <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Mr. Everly? Yeah. You're a much younger man than I expected, Mr. Coburn. Oh, my name is Blake, Mr. Coburn's manager. Will you go in? Thanks. I expect you've met Lord Velcrist. Oh, that pleasure has been denied me until now. But of course, I know your reputation, sir, as a, an expert on rare stamps. Thank you. Uh, perhaps you'll tell Mr. Coburn I've arrived. I'm afraid Mr. Coburn cannot be here tonight. But he sent me a cable. And he has authorized me to act on his behalf. Oh, thanks. Well, that's a pity. Mr. Coburn's well known in the stamp world. I've been looking forward to meeting him. Will he be away long? He had to attend an important stamp sale in Rome rather unexpectedly. I see. Gosh, a real Barbados overprint. Isn't it a Lulu? What do you say about this? Well, a man who pursues a treasure with your tenacity deserves to be rewarded. I congratulate you on a superb acquisition. Say, that's just dandy. And now, if you'll excuse me, I really must be going. Uh, why, of course. Uh, thanks again. And uh, I'll see you at the exhibition in New York in the fall. I'll be there. Goodbye. 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 Do you know there are only four of those stamps left in the whole world? Oh, sure. You would know, wouldn't you? Yes, three are catalogued in private collections. And this is the fourth. Uh, this is from Sir Charles Hawksley's collection, isn't it? The late Sir Charles Hawksley. We're disposing of his collection on behalf of his widow. And Mr. Coburn's not retracted of his original offer? No, sir. It still stands at 10,000 pounds. Fine. I've got a certified check right here. You remember, of course, the restrictions on the publications of the sale for six months or the end of the auction? Yes, that's the one thing I don't like. It's going to take the edge off my fun. Do you know, I've got a friend in New York who's going to go green with envy if I can show him this. I'm sorry, sir, but uh, Lady Hawksley insists on discretion. Very well, young fellow. I suppose that's a small courtesy. I shall have to sit around for six months before I can start crowing. <laughs> oh. oh, I'm sorry. Thanks very much. Do you know, this is one of the happiest moments of my life, Mr. Blake. Come in. Mr. Everly's here to see you, Mr. Warburg. Fine, show him in. Good evening, Henry. Well, well, J.D., it's good to see you. When I called you at the office, they told me you were in England. That's right, just a little business. Oh, mm -hmm. have you made any additions to your collection uh, lately? Well, uh, yes, I have. As a matter of fact, that's why I called you at the office. I wanted to show you my Queen Victoria Fijians. Oh. Set of four. Cost me eight thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. Here, let me fix you a drink. Yeah. Very nice, Henry. A fine, clean issue. Thought you'd like them. 
Yeah. How about you? Anything new? Mm, no, but I'm on to something big. I think I can pull it off. But I'll let you know about it in a few months' time. Sounds intriguing. Mm-hmm. A bit careless with the glue pot, aren't you, Henry? These pages are gummed up. <laughs> Uh, let's not talk too much shop, eh, J.D.? Uh, <clears throat> here, here's your drink. Thanks. I'm depending on you, Tom. You did a swell job on that oil stock swindle. And if anyone can straighten me out in this, it's you. Thanks a lot. But I must admit that uh, philately was never my strong point. It doesn't have to be. I know Henry Warburton. And when he gets his hands on a prize item, he's just got to blow his top boasting about it. That's only natural. Sure. So why glue the pages together? Maybe he's waiting for the right minute to uh, pull it out of the hat. <laughs> Not Warbuck. How do you know he just bought it? Because I checked up on the other three stamps, and they're all safely tucked away in private museums in Europe. Then what's the possibility of a genuine fifth stamp having turned up? Such a find would receive terrific publicity. And still it wouldn't explain why I got this offer of another one from Oklahoma. Yeah, that complicates things. I'll say it does. If there are three Barbados overprints in America, that means that's six all told. Which is two too many, whichever way you add it up. So you think that yours may be a counterfeit? I don't know what to think. The possibility is there, and I don't like it. I can understand how you feel. And yet it doesn't make sense. I can't see how a man like Valkyrie could have been fooled. After all, he's the biggest expert there is in these things. Has the stamp been out of your possession since you bought it? No. You're sure of that? Yes. Of course, I sneaked a few looks at it in the plane, and since I've been back, of course. But all the time, it's either been in my safe or in my wallet. And maybe this is a case for the police. No, 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 Tom. News gets around the stamp world like wildfire. I'd be a laughing stock if I was made a sucker. And nobody rolls J.D. Everly and gets away with it. You've got to get that 10,000 back if it costs me 20,000 to do it. 20,000? I'm giving you a free hand, Tom. Okay. This Blake character, had you ever met him before? No. How about the Coburn Agency? First time I ever dealt with them. Of course, their business is well known in the stamp world. Mm. Tell me exactly what happened after Lord Valkyrie left. Well, we were standing like this. The desk was between us, and the stamp was on the top. He uh, picked it up and passed it to me. That's all that happened? Yes, that's all. Oh, wait a minute. He dropped it first. Then he picked it up and gave it to uh -huh. me. But I swear my eyes never left his hands. J.D., what's the date today? The uh, 7th. You're absolutely sure about that? Of course I'm sure. What do you think you're... Well, I'll be... A simple case of manipulation. Okay, Tom. Don't let's waste any more time, eh? Give me a call as soon as you get to England. I'll do that. Now I better get down to the Airways office and make a reservation. Don't bother. I've got all that fixed for you. <laughs> you know what I am? I like to think I get results. Can I get you anything, sir? Is there anything you'd like? Yes. Yes. A very large, very dry martini. Mr. Martin? Yeah? You left your book on the plane. Barney. I should have known you'd be here. Nothing would stop me once I got your cable. I was afraid you might be uh, held up on a job. Nah, work at me. We just don't get on well together. You're keeping yourself clean, I hope. I've been on the straight and narrow since 44. Even getting used to it. Good. Hey. This way. By the way, uh, did you make a hotel reservation for me? Well, Tom, not a hotel. I got a better idea. Oh? I fixed this up with an apartment. What? It's a wonderful joint. We'll be real comfortable there. Come on, I've got a car outside. 
You've got a car. Well, not exactly me. I borrowed it. Belongs to Palomar. Okay, Tom? Yeah. Come on. Well, the improvement in your taste surprises me, Barney. This is quite an apartment. Thought you'd like it. Belongs to a friend of mine. The, um, the one who loaned you the car? That's right. But, um, what's he doing? Nine months. Would it be too much to ask what for? Car stealing. Make yourself home, Tom. Thank you, Barney. And your pal. Now, why tell me what your trip's all about? Philately. Oh, medical job, eh? <laughs> no. Philately, my academic friend, is not a disease. Isn't it? No. What kind of friend? Academic. Oh. Oh, I see. What of that sort. Philately Barney is the study and collection of stamps. Stamps? Yeah. But in this case, you might almost call it philanthropy, because a man gave 10,000 pounds for this one. Phew. It's not even new. Nope. It's got some scribbling on it. That's what's called the overprint. That's what makes it so valuable. Priceless, eh? No. Worthless. Maybe I'm not very bright today. And what you've just said is, this stamp is so valuable that it's not worth anything. <laughs> Barney, what I mean is that it ought to be worth that much, but uh, everything points to the fact that it's a phony. Oh. Well, now it's beginning to make sense. Quite a seller. I didn't choose it. it. Belongs to a pal of mine. Oh, come on, Barney. We've got to make a little visit. You come this way, please. It's good of you to see me so promptly, Mr. Coburn. Not at all, not at all. What can I do for you, Mr. Mr. Martin? I'm uh, making some inquiries about a business deal made with you by Mr. J.D. Everly of New York. Everly? Oh, yes, I've heard of him, of course. Uh, so you should have, Mr. Coburn, since your agency recently completed a not inconsiderable transaction with him. Transaction? I think you must be mistaken. You are disposing of the Hawksley connection, aren't you? Yes, I'm hoping for the commission. But uh, haven't you already sold some of the pieces? Mr. Martin, you cannot sell what you haven't got. And I don't propose to continue answering your questions until you can satisfy me as to your motives. I have 10,000 pounds worth of motives, Mr. Coburn. What in heaven's name are you talking about? Perhaps this will serve to jog your memory. Why, a Barbados overprint. Does Mr. Everly wish to dispose of it? Hardly. He only bought it from you a week ago. From me a week ago? That's impossible. I was in Rome at the time. I was uh, speaking figuratively. The actual deal was handled by your manager, Mr. Blake. 